Well, we want to welcome you to Doctrine of Studies Bible Church Wednesday Bible Study at 11.30 a.m. Uh, it is normally our luncheon Bible study on Wednesday. We call it breaking bread on Wednesday. But because of the stay-home orders that we're under, uh, we're, I'm bringing this to you while you're having lunch at your home. And I'm thrilled to do that today at 1130 on Wednesday. Uh, this is uh, a special series we're doing called Let Not Your Hearts Be Troubled. It was designed for believers around the world who are going through this uh, COVID-19 crisis. Uh, we're in it in Alabama and Birmingham. And so we come to you today from Doctrinal Studies Bible Church in Birmingham, Alabama. It is our sixth lesson, as I mentioned, in a series. If you're looking to keep up with us, this is uh, today our seventh lesson in this series that began with John 14.1, where Jesus said, let not your hearts be troubled. And the disciples were in a crisis. And uh, then in verse 27, he comes back with that and talks about an antidote of the peace, the peace of Christ within you. Well, that's where we are. And uh, I'm taking my studies out of 1 Thessalonians 5.18. Today, uh, it comes from verse 18. In everything, give thanks. In everything, Give thanks, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. This is, be thankful in everything. I know sometimes that's really hard for people, even Christians, who know that God will never leave them for, nor forsake them. But sometimes in that waiting period of having things resolved in their life, this begins to be a great question in their life. Has God forsaken me? Has he, has he left me? I feel like I'm left out here on alone to fend for myself. But he tells you he will never leave you nor forsake you. He'll never leave you, forsake you. And uh, why he leaves you in a, a bind, we might say, is to stimulate your spiritual growth and your dependence on him. That's why Christians go through that. That's the book of Job. Uh, that's the life of all of us, by the way, not just Job. That's the life of all of us. Uh, Job, of course, his looks extreme, and none of us want to go through that. But we all have that, and we're in it now. In everything, in the COVID-19 crisis, what are we to do? We're to give thanks. For this is the will. For this, is, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. See, for those of you in Christ Jesus who are secured, this crisis is for you. And in everything, no matter how you describe it, whether it's going, visiting a doctor's office and he tells you you've got something that shakes your world. What do you do? I mean, what are you told to do with that? Or your mate comes home and says, after two or three kids with you, says, uh, I don't want to be responsible anymore. I don't want to be responsible to you. I don't want to be responsible to the children. I don't want to be responsible uh, to anything connected with marriage and family. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm walking. What do you do with that? What do you do with that crisis in your life? What do you do with that? Hmm? What does Paul say to do? What's the Bible say? In everything, do what? Give thanks. Now, the second half of that part of that verse is really important because he doesn't say in everything, give thanks. And put a period. He doesn't do that. What he does, he gives you the antidote. 
for that. And everything gives. I said, we can give him praise when everything's hunky dory. But we're but we're we're in it when we're fighting for our life, when we're fighting for our next meal, when we're when everything's on the line in our business and if I lose my business, I lose my house, I lose my car, everything's attached. What do you do? Say, and everything give thanks. Then the second half of that verse is where the antidote is for that. This is the pill you've got to swallow if you're going to get better. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. That should give you hope, not despair. For the one who gave you the job, the one who gave you the marriage, the one who gave you the family, the one who gave it all the things that you counted blessed for until you got this news is still the one in charge. The one who said, I will never leave you nor forsake you is the one who's in charge. And we're going to talk about that today. This will be a very important lesson for you. You don't have to have a coded 19 to disrupt your world and put it in a spin. Although it has done a lot of people, you could be an isolated case, like some I just mentioned, that turns your world around. And we're going to talk about that today. It comes from 1 Thessalonians 5.18. And after a word of prayer, we're going to come back and we're going to take this apart. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to understand how important this is. What does the Bible say? And what is the antidote? I mean, how can I do that? In everything, give thanks. When the everything I think I've lost. What are you going to do with that? See, the second half of that verse tells you. But first, let me tell you, the Bible is a spiritual book for spiritual people. You can't learn it nor live it in carnality. The evidence of carnality is personal sin. What do I do with personal sin? I have to confess it to God. And I'll tell you why. But first, let me tell you why. You have to confess it. He says, if you confess your sins, I will forgive you and I will cleanse you of that sin. When I confess it, I get cleansed. Why do I need to be cleansed? Cleansed for what reason? Yes, it, re it, it took care of the sin, but what did it restore to me? What was restored? Listen to me now, this is important. Spirituality. See, carnality and spirituality are in conflict in a Christian life. Say so that's Galatians 5, 16 and 17. Walk in the spirit. Don't fulfill, and you will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. These are at war within the believer. So that's Galatians 5, 16 and 17. <laughs> Did you get that? It's really important for you to get that. Well, when you confess your sins, you go out of carnality of the flesh and back into the Holy Spirit's ministry. And that's really important for Bible study because of John 14, 26. The Holy Spirit has been given to you. He indwells you and he's been given to you to teach and recall the word of God in your life. Just not only is it important, what's the Bible say for you to bring you the comfort and to bring you the joy and bring you the victory to your life, but to share it with other people who need to hear this and be taught that, such as I'm doing today with you. So let's have a word of prayer. I give you an opportunity to confess sin. It could be mental attitude type, sins of the tongue or averts. They should be confessed in silence and privacy prior to study, for it gives you the dynamics of the ministry of the Spirit to teach you the Word of God. And so, our Father, here we are. Uh, another week in, under the COVID-19 crisis. Still walking strong in the Lord, still believing, Father, that he is the champion every cause in my life. The faith is the victory that overcomes the world, as recorded by John in 1 John 5, 4. Faith is the victory that overcomes the world. Jesus told us in John 16, 33, Father, 
In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good courage. Be of good courage, I've overcome the world. Who is that? Jesus Christ. And when I'm in Christ Jesus, I'm in the victory stage of life. I'm not in the defeat stage of life. Teach us that today, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, here we are in 1 Thessalonians 5, <clears throat> verses 12 through 28. If you have a study Bible, Paul has concluded <clears throat> his first book to the Thessalonians. What is important from verse 13 to 25, well, actually from 13 to 26, is he listed 17 imperatives. That's a Greek, in the Greek language, that's a command. The first 16 of them are in the present tense, and the last one in verse 26, the word greet, is an aorist tense, which rolls all the other ones up into this. Now, this, the 16 begin in verse 13 and go through 25. There are 16 present imperatives. That's a standing command in the Christian life. And they're how to deal with, they're how to deal with crisis in the life. 16 present imperatives. Now, if you were to start looking at them, like the first one would be live in peace. And if you started looking and going through them, you would find if you began to count, you would realize that we are at number 10. If I remember right, we're at number 10. And so what I've been doing during the time of this crisis, COVID-19, what I've done is I've gone into this pool of 16 present imperatives. And I've pulled out certain ones to talk about that I think would be relevant for this time in, in the life of my church and maybe in your life as a member of the body of Christ somewhere in the world. And so we're at number, we're at number 10 if I've counted correctly, and uh, here's what it says. Now, there's two parts to this. This verse has two parts. Most, most of them in here didn't. Most of them didn't have. But this one has two parts. <clears throat> and this is really important today. The first part says, and everything give thanks. The present imperative is the word give thanks. That's the present imperative. Give thanks. It's a present active imperative, a present active imperative, second person plural. If you've got a study guide, you could get one through doctrinalstudies.com. You can get a study guide. But if you don't have one, you need a pencil and paper. <laughs> Here we go again. If you don't have this, you didn't get this study guide down, then you go get you a pencil. I'll wait just a minute. Go get you a pencil and paper along with your Bible. Let's have Bible study. Now, the first part of this is in, which is a preposition, in plus the locative, in everything. And it means whatever, whatever circumstance in life is everything. You know, people use that word a lot. A person will say, I've lost everything. Uh, they'll say to a person, you mean everything to me. This word is used a lot. And people that use it know what they're saying. Sometimes when somebody else says it, you go like, well, I don't know what that means. Everything means everything. Everything that's everything to you. You see, that imperative, give thanks, is the second person plural, y'all. See, in the north we say you guys. In the south we say y'all. It's second person plural. Y'all. In everything. See, we know that this word everything is a word that everybody uses to things that are really important. Because you hear people use it all the time in that way. So the first thing he says, in Whatever, whatever the everything is, whatever everything is to you, in everything, you, what, what everything is to you, that which is of great prime, superior importance of whatever, give thanks. Now, 
Listen, when we got it, when we're living on top of everything is good, don't have a problem giving thanks. Suppose that's disrupted. See, that's what Paul is talking about. But what happens if your little world that's snug and secured gets ruffled up good? Then what do you do? You fall apart. You panic. You go into bed and don't get up. You close the rooms and shut the blinds. And there's no more good days and there's no more sunshine in my heart. If you're a believer in the gospel of Jesus Christ, that he died for your sins, was buried and raised from the dead, and you believe that for your eternal salvation, you're wrong to close the door and go into the bedroom and shut it down and crawl up into a fetal position in defeat. Because in Christ, through faith, you're always in victory. You're always in the victory lane. You're always in the victory lane. 1 John 5, 4. Faith is the victory that overcomes the world. You can always be, listen, when you're living the faith cycle, when you're living it in an excited, wonderful way in your life because you know God is in control, it's a matter of letting, let, turning my control loose and become dependent on his control of my situation. you always in victory lane. We live too, many, too much in the defeat lane. We should always live it's possible to live every day, every moment in the victory lane. But you got to live it by faith. What does the Bible say? Then trust it. It is the word and promise of God. Well, there's the first half. In everything, in everything, give thanks. You know what's interesting about the word everything? It's the Greek word pas. It's locative. Now watch this now. It's locative, singular, neuter. It's singular. Because it's always singular in our life. I lost my marriage. I've lost everything. I lost my family. I've lost everything. I lost my, my job. I lost everything. I lost my business. I lost everything. I lost my health. I lost everything. And pastor, you say I'm, I'm commanded to give thanks for what? For what? For what? I'll tell you, for what? The next verse, the last half of that verse. Listen to what it says. It says, for this, I'll come back. For this, there's no verb. There's no verb there. The word is has been added. Makes smooth translation into English, but it's not in the Greek. And it's not in the Greek because they don't want smooth translation. They, they know how. Listen, God knows how to put a verb in a sentence. If this is the word of God, he knows, he knows how, how to put a verb in a sentence. When he pulls it out, it shakes you up because you know, there's no verb. Well, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? And God pulled it out for a specific reason. There's no verb, is. Is is not there. I'll tell you why in a moment. I'm just reading it. For this... No is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Now, for this to work, you got to be in Christ Jesus. And for this to work, you got to remember you're always in Christ Jesus. And being in Christ Jesus is the best place to be in time and eternity. <laughs> it's the best place to be in time and eternity. To be in Christ. 
to be under his authority, seated at the right hand of God the Father. I'm in Christ, seated at the right hand of God the Father in all authority. That's the best place to be. All authority on heaven and earth. See, you miss that. Let's go back to it. And everything give thanks. For this, God's will for you in Christ Jesus. See, I got another prepositional phrase. In plus the locative. See, I got this sphere over here. In everything give thanks. And I got this one at the end. In Christ Jesus. <laughs> that's how you do That's how these two circles work. I... I can be thankful in everything, whether I have it or don't have it, because I'm in Christ Jesus, who has all authority, all authority of heaven and earth, and especially my life in him. See those two circles? The, these two circles? It's what's in between them that's important, the message in between it. For this, God's will for you. These two circles are both connected with God's will. Did you get that? Because that's what my lesson's all about. I'm going to talk about three things about giving thanks through my introduction. In everything. Give, give God thanks in everything. Here's the first point. Now, I want to come back to the Greek a little bit with me. You got you to pay attention. Now, your English, NIV, your English NIV, and your English NASV, uh, uh, New American Standard Bible, the New International Bible, they're both going to tell you. Now, I want you to get this principle. There is no Greek definite article. There is no Greek definite article. They're really important in the Greek language. There is no Greek article, definite article, with God, God's will, or Christ, or Jesus. Now, these are all main characters. There is God, God's will, Christ, or Jesus. There's no definite article. There's none. In fact, there's no definite article in the whole sentence in the Greek language. In all of verse 18, there's no, there's no definite article. The King James Bible, they gave it one after the will of God, kind of like the is, to fill, it in, to fill in. It's not in the Greek language. You say to me, Rod, why is it so, so, so what? Well, the importance of this the importance of this, it places emphasis on the word for and the word this. There's no verb in the second half of this. There's no verb and there's no definite articles. So the word for, gar, and, and the demonstrative pronoun this, Hutas becomes very important. In the Greek language, the word for can be used in different ways. Not in English, but in the Greek. One of the ways that for can be used is for emphasis. And you always watch for it if there is a deponent pronoun. If there is a deponent pronoun, if it's used with a a, a deponent pronoun, this or that, you pay attention because it's emphatic. It's for emphasis. For has set the stage for something to emphasize. Are you with me? Now, the word this is the demonstrative pronoun. It's nominative, 
It's nominative, singular, neuter, translated in English, translated, is translated this. Now, you know that what he's referring to is that is the prepositional phrase, in everything give thanks for this, is something. For this, the word this is a reference back to in everything, give thanks. See, normally you would say, give thanks in everything for this is a, see, that's the way you would normally say that. The writer didn't do it. Paul put the prepositional phrase out front because that's where the command is and that's what's important to him. And he shook this whole thing up. When your world gets all shook up, this is the way it looks. It's all gobbledygook. He says, in everything, give thanks. For this, giving thanks in everything, this, no verb. The word this is nominative, working like the subject, using the prepositional phrase. For emphasis. Now, when you have a dermostive pronoun, if you have your study guide, I wrote a very important aspect in the Greek language about a demonstrative pronoun, the word this or that in the English. It is used to emphasize a designated object, an object of your faith. Now listen to what he says. In everything, give thanks. And boy, the hair on the back of your head stands up. Well, you mean, and you would give me an example, and I would have to say, yes. Oh, I think that's unheard of. But why would God do that to me? Huh? Because, Peter, you're not paying attention to the word of God in your life. You're not walking by faith. You're walking by sight. You're not walking in the spirit. You're walking by flesh. Of course he's going to tear up your world a little bit. Because he loves you. In everything, give thanks. For emphasis, the emphatic conjunction, gar, with a demonstrative pronoun, places the great emphasis on pointing towards a designated object. And here it is. For this is God's will for you. I know, I'm trying to let it sink in. Just trying to let it sink in a minute. In everything, give thanks. Now the emphasis. Da, 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 da. For this. Used in the nominative singular neuter. Going with the locative neuter of everything. For this, God's will. For you, who are in Christ Jesus. The absence of the Greek definite article in this sentence, this verse, 18. Which should be with the typical spiritual sources like God or God's will or Christ or Jesus are absent. And it places, their at the absence of the definite article places the emphasis upon the believer. Now let me say that again. The absence of the definite article with God, God's will, Christ, and Jesus, 
where they normally would be, definite articles, to place the emphasis on that, is not placed there. It's placed on the believer. The fact that the absence of the definite article places it on the one he's speaking to, the you all. No matter how the circumstances, no matter how they change, ev how the everything changes, singular, how it changes doesn't affect how we think. You see, it places emphasis on the believer keeping the command. What was the command? Give thanks. See, the command was give thanks. Always, 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 under every circumstance of life, always, 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 always. There must be an exception. No, no exceptions to those in Christ. Give thanks. It's a present active imperative, second person plural. It's a standing command for the life of Christ in a, in a life of a believer. And what's that mean? It means to keep a, a mental attitude a grace-oriented attitude about your life in Christ, not your life in the world. It's about your life in Christ, not your life in the world. Your life in the world will be full of tribulations, but be of good courage, John 16, 33. But be of good courage. Christ has overcome the world. <clears throat> You're an overcomer in Christ. <clears throat> not beat down bag of bones in the world. The emphasis now is upon the believer to keep a grace attitude because the word giving thanks is made up in a moment, I'll tell you, of two words, and the key word in it is grace. Keep a grace attitude in every circumstance of the Christian life. This is commanded to every spiritual advancing believer who believes the word of God. <clears throat> and where, to give, where the believer is to give thanks in every difficulty of life. Thank you, Father. Give thanks. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for what you just took from me. Because whatever I had, you gave to me to start with. I came naked into the world, like Job said, I came naked into the world. And what do I have is from God. And when I leave this world, I will leave no matter what I've accumulated, I will leave in the world. And that's okay with me, because it all came from God, and he can do whatever he wants. The spiritually advancing believer is commanded to give thanks in every circumstance of his life, not because it is difficult, but because God's grace is always sufficient. I'm going to say that again because you missed it. The spiritually advancing believer is commanded to give thanks in every difficulty of his life, not because it is difficult, but because God's grace is sufficient. You ought to write this down, 2 Corinthians 12, 9 and 10. Here's what it says. My, God says, my grace is sufficient. God's grace is sufficient. It's sufficient for what? Every circumstance of your life, in everything. For power is perfected in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, would I rather boast about my weakness so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am well content with weakness, with insult, with distresses, with persecutions, with all sorts of difficulties for the sake of Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. When I am weak, then I am strong. Where? In Christ. In Christ Jesus. Here's the second point. To emphasize the importance of being grace-oriented in every stressful circumstance of the Christian way of life, Paul used the Greek word Eucharist. Eucharistio. 
we use that word here for the Eucharist, the Lord's Supper, because it's a word giving thanks. It's made up of a compound word. EU on the front means good or well, well. And then charisteo, we, the word in charisteo is C-H-A-R-I-S, which is the word grace. It's talking about the all-sufficiency of God's grace. Eucharistio is a compound word. It is the word that's used under command of a present imperative in our text today. Every church-age believer is commanded to maintain a grace attitude. No matter what the circumstances, the circumstances don't dictate how you think. The word of God does. You respond to the word of God in your circumstance. You don't respond to the circumstance. You respond to the word of God to the circumstance. You apply faith. You keep a grace attitude of the all-sufficiency grace of God. There is no circumstance in your life that's too difficult for God. Nothing is impossible with God. Nothing is impossible with God. I don't know what you're going through today, but I know you needed this lesson. Boy, did you need this one, just like I did. We're going through the COVID-19 Listen, in the midst of that code 19, if that wasn't enough, marriages are breaking up, businesses are breaking up, people are going hungry. They don't know where the next meal is coming from. Listen, if you believe in God, you know where the next meal is coming from. If he has to ship it, if he has to ship it from out of heaven, he will give you manna. During Elijah's worst days, he was fed the best by vultures who picked up meat from, cooked meat from the king's castle and brought it to Jeremiah to eat. Prime rib. Cooked. Mm. He flew it in. Because God's grace is sufficient. You see, this is how you apply Romans 8, 28. In everything, or all things work together for good to those who love God, who are called according to his purpose, his divine plan. That's, this is how it works. We know, Paul wrote in Romans 8, 28. That's oida means you have this doctrinal principle firmly rooted in your soul, and upon that you make your choices in life. You know, Paul wrote, you know that God works all things together for good. You know. You do now. <laughs> oh, howdy, people, you know now. In a world, you have tribulations, but be of good courage. Christ overcomes the world. Be an overcomer. Be an overcomer. America. God bless America. America has a national holiday called Thanksgiving, or the giving of thanks. We have a national holiday as a tribute to God Almighty. It was originally a tribute to God Almighty. I mean, it goes all the way back to the 1600s and pilgrims. I wonder how many, even when we get to Thanksgiving, we get to November and Thanksgiving this year, we'll be able to look back and thank God for everything their life went through.
because they saw God do impossible things in their life, and they were so blessed by it. America, I wonder this Thanksgiving if it'll be a Thanksgiving like the first Thanksgiving of the pilgrims or be another whole dumb hum day. I hope it'll be revolutionary in our life. I hope it'll bring us back to have a thankful heart to God in everything. That's my prayer. Psalm 69, 32. The humble, that's the person that has a grace attitude to life, especially towards himself. The humble have seen it and are glad. You who seek God, let your heart be revived. <laughs> Do you know what this Code 19 should do for all of us? It should revive our heart to God. Revive us. Revive us, oh God. Revive us. He gave us the Code 19. He gives you these things to bring us to a humbleness, great attitude about who is the all-sufficient one in our life and how does it work. When it begins to work in your life, it'll make you humble. It'll make you humble towards God, life, circumstances of life. And it will revive your soul towards God. Psalm 69, 32. Let me conclude today with this point. Last year, we studied a series called The Life of Joseph. Be well with your study. We did it on Tuesday night Bible studies. We took it from Genesis 37 and ran it all the way to Genesis 50. We studied the undeserved suffering, the life of Joseph that was cream of the crop in everything. Everything was going hunky-dory. And it was easy for him to give thanks. And it all come to a screeching halt in the most horrible day that a person could imagine. When his brothers attempted to kill him, were talked out of killing him, and they threw him in a well so he would go by natural causes of death as if their hands hadn't done it. Then decided to make some money off from Joseph, so they sold him to slave traders going to Egypt. What it takes most of us to do over a whole lifetime. For Job, it took 42 chapters. For Joseph, it took six verses. It took Job 42 chapters to get his life squared away. With this and everything, give thanks. For Joseph, it took six verses. Six verses, and it revived his soul. You can read these six verses in Genesis 37, 23 through 28, and then again in 39, 1 through 4. You know what you learn? You learn to give that everything, give that everything that's going on in your life, that's turned your world upside down, give it to God, and give it to God right then. The quicker you get it to get it to God, the better off you're going to be. You learn that from, from Joseph. And you know what happens when you give it to God? He revives your soul. He revives your spirit. He revives you, revives you spiritually. And you know what Joseph became? He became an enormous missionary for Christ to Egypt. 
and then to the, his own family of Jacob the patriarch. I would say that's a pretty, pretty good revival. It took him six verses. You know how he recovered? Instead of setting his eyes on his brothers, he set his eyes on the Lord. He gave his circumstance to God. The all-sufficient one. In Hebrews, the 12th chapter, verse 2, the writer told us to do it. He said, fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross. You see, most of us, we want the, we're ready to get the joy after the event, not before. Oh, yeah. Oh, we can all have joy when we come out of the ringer in good shape. Joseph did what Jesus did. He set his eyes on the prize, which was to please God by doing his will. This is the hand that's been dealt me. I'm going to let God play it. This is the hand God has dealt me. I'm going to let God play it. So you miss that. You think the hand that God has dealt you, you've got to, you've got to play. Nothing could be farther from the truth. Grace-oriented believers know, turn it over to the Lord. This is the, this is the hand the Lord has dealt. Let the Lord play it. The sooner you learn that, the easier your journey is. See, people miss that. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross. That's what I'm asking you. That's what, that's what Paul is talking about. Who for the joy set before him endured the cross despite the shame and then sat down in victory at the right hand of God the Father in heaven. Then sat down in victory. The joy was he saw it all because of the will of God. He saw it all because of the will of God. And everything give thanks. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Are you listening to me? Huh? If I preach too long for you, if I preach too hard at you, if I told you things that you know is impossible, of course it's impossible in the flesh. Of course it's impossible by worldly thinking. But it's a Norman standard for the Word of God. Joseph was able to get on with his life and to forgive his brothers for plotting to murder him, telling his father a lie about his death, and sending him into slavery into Egypt. This was because this occasion he put in the hands of God, this occasion in everything, this occasion he took as a learning episode and began to develop spiritual maturity in his life. This is why we have it in ours, this Codeg 19. It's for spiritual growth maturity in the midst of undeserved suffering. What it did, it propelled Joseph towards dependency on the all-sufficiency God's uh, grace of God, which later led to re re reuniting of his entire family in Christ. Listen to what Joseph said in closing. Genesis 50, verse 20. As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good in order to bring about this very present result to preserve many people alive. 
See, that's looking at the victory at the end of the run, at the end of the episode of life. You see, for Joseph, as well as Jesus, this was a transformational time in their life. And it is for you and I. It's a time of Romans 12 too, a time for transformational living. So our Father, we thank you today for what your grace has provided for us. We pray, Father, as we look in everything, give thanks. For this, God's will for you in Christ Jesus is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.